Okay, from here, I'm going to jump into the the AIT solution uh, that we, we now have that we're offering for uh, AirInc 664N systems. So first of all, the hardware design, it's a, it's a very simple design. It's FPGA based and really contains, you know, four main components. So there, there's, a, there's a, a big FPGA, um, there's some boot flash memory uh, to boot the FPGA from, uh, a, a sizable chunk of RAM, and then <coughs> our hardware implementation utilizes uh, the small form uh, pluggable cages so we can we can use uh, basically several different types of media interfaces so this is um, same hardware platform is used for our PMC and XMC modules and then we're also able to support things like PCI PCI Express um, and PXI using using carriers for the the PMC and XMC modules okay the architecture of, of what's going on actually in the the FPGA down on the hardware so at the bottom layer, uh, in firmware, we have the Airink 664 Mac. Um, and then there are also two embedded processors that are synthesized within the FPGA that operate in parallel. One processor, the output processor, is responsible for processing the output stream of data. And then independently, we have an input processor processing the input stream. <coughs> so, um, yeah, basically the output processor is is responsible for taking uh, application or payload data uh, written to memory on the card from the host and then moving that um, doing the the upper layer of protocol processing like the the IP fragmentation for example and also implementing the the ARIC 653 sampling and queuing type of, of functions and uh, so building the messages with all the headers and the overhead and then sending them via the the Mac which is doing the ARIC 664 traffic shaping <coughs> The uh, the Airink 664 Mac actually is is has the ability to process two classes of traffic, so we basically have two independent FIFOs for that we can write frames to down in the Mac for it to output data. One is is for critical traffic or Airink 664 traffic, which is treated at a higher priority, and then the other is for COTS Ethernet, so just standard I, IEEE uh, 802.3 Ethernet. So what, what this means is basically the card can, can manage and send standard Ethernet uh, data and traffic at the same time that it's doing uh, Airink 664, BL traffic shaping, those sorts of things. <coughs> uh, on the input stream, again, it's the same idea, kind of in reverse. The Mac on the input side can also support two classes of traffic, and, and the classes of traffic are basically identified by the, uh, the upper 20, what is it, upper 32 bits of the Mac destination address. So for Airing 664 traffic, the lower 16 bits identify the, uh, the virtual link. The upper 32 bits are used to identify usually a constant for Airing 664, which are used to uniquely identify the traffic as being the Airing 664 traffic. So the MAC can be configured with this, this upper 32-bit constant and use, use that to identify um, incoming frames as either standard Ethernet or Airing 664 frames, and then it will dump those into either a, a low priority FIFO or the high priority FIFO for the input processor to then process. The input processor takes these frames uh, out of the, those FIFOs uh, and then basically puts them back together, does the IP reassembly if it's needed, and then dumps the, the payload data into buffers that are on the card that are, um, that are used by the host to read data uh, for individual Airing 653 ports, for example. Jumping up to the uh, the host software, have kind of a block diagram here of all the host software that we're, that we're providing uh, with the solution. So if we look over to the, the right of the slide here, the main application interfaces to the end system hardware are that are provided are the Airink 664 end system API, which is sort of your standard uh, you know ANSI C API uh, that we support on Windows. Uh, also a Linux version and a VX Works version of this. And this basically provides your read and write functions. So read data from a UDP queuing port or write data to a queuing or sampling port. And also uh, read statistics like messages received, those sorts of things. Uh, also this is the API where you would set up and get things like uh, events or interrupt callbacks when messages are received or different con conditions are reached. Uh, we also provide a LabVIEW instrument driver. So this is a collection of VIs that provide you know, the read and write access to, to the hardware. And, and this is actually a fully uh, compatible with LabVIEW instrument driver that we've gone through 
sort of the compatible with LabVIEW's um, certification process with uh, National Instruments and had it you know thoroughly tested and, and validated to work um, you know on a, on a Windows or non real-time environment and also in within the LabVIEW real-time environment so basically two different types of programming language interfaces for the, your application programs these the both the instrument driver and the end system API they have simple functions to configure configure the hardware uh, basically it's one function or one VI that reads in a binary or, or hex file that contains the definition of all of the virtual links um, UDP ports the, uh, the the sort of configuration information that the end system hardware needs in order to do the Arink 664 traffic shaping and, and, and protocol processing so not a whole bunch of VI's or or C function calls to create these configurations it's a simple loading of a, of a device configuration file now these configuration files can be defined um, basically in one of three different ways or, or kind of we support three different use cases for defining the configurations um, one of them is graphically so we provide our, our flight simulator tool uh, so it's a, a GUI where you can graphically go through and, and create VLs and specify the parameters and then create the, the messaging ports those sorts of things that are, are um, associated with them uh, the other way is we, you can manually just write an XML file which defines the configuration and then we provide this configuration compiler which is basically a command line utility which is going to compile that XML file into the device loadable format we then also provide a, a configuration library so this is a, a C++ it's an object-oriented API that allows you to programmatically so from your application say um, make function calls to like construct VL objects and construct UDP port objects and then from that collection of, of objects you can you can dump them out to the device loadable hex file um, this configuration library can also import configurations in, in construct those objects from XML files that you define so based on this sort of core XML um, you know human readable uh, definition of the the Arink 664 configurations you can you can share um, the configuration data between the GUI and say the configuration library um, so so you can basically interchange and use several different methods of defining the, the configuration data some of the details of the uh, the N system API. So this is the C API. <coughs> it provides read write or, or basically read write ports to all the layers of the protocol. So you can configure and read and write uh, down at the the Ethernet level. So you can read and write raw frames. Also at the IP level, so you can write the whole IP payload and read the whole IP payload. Uh, <coughs> and then all on up the stack, all the way up to the the Arink 653 sampling and queuing uh, type ports. Also, as I said before, events are supported. So you can set up the API to send events or basically interrupts back to your application uh, based on several types of, of, of network events. For instance, the receipt of a message or when certain error conditions are detected or even when a message is sent. Um, jump in here to a little uh, show and tell on the XML file format so this is the the format of the configuration data where you're defining the the, uh, the configuration of the end system um, in Visual Studio here so <coughs> the XML uh, core configuration format that we use it's defined uh, we, we've defined a, a, a really rigorous uh, XML schema to specify the format of these files the idea being so that using you know any one of the variety of XML editors that are commercially available uh, any user could could very easily just sort of handwrite these configurations and uh, and then use the the configuration converter utility to convert them into device loadable um, files as, as I showed in the block diagram. So here I have actually a sample XML file that I've started editing within Visual Studio here, and I actually have Visual Studio pointing back to uh, the schema that we've defined that we provide with uh, the the software support package. And so what that allows you to do is what um, is to basically get nice inline editing help so I'm pointing at the schema you can see at this point I'm going to define another end system so a little bit about what I'm doing here in this configuration file you can see that I'm I'm configuring an Arink 664 device so basically one of the boards one of the PMC's or XMC's PCI PXI boards on each of those boards I can actually simulate multiple end systems 
So I can I can set up that board to send and receive data um, as if it were actually multiple real end systems in a real network. So I've already defined one end system with several um, output VLs and input VLs. So what I'll do is I'll just go through a few of the steps of defining another end system that I would simulate on that same device. So I can select that I'm going to define another end system. Then I can see all of the options that I can set for that. So I can enable the end system. Uh, I can also give it a name. Then within that end system, I have to give it a MAC source address. So I can do that. Uh, I can get down to the outputs, so the output VLs for instance. So I say an output VL and for that VL I can set things like the maximum frame length. Whether I'm, whether I'm actually using sequence numbers on that VL or not, so, so that we can support some test and simulation type of applications, we have the ability to have a VL actually include the sequence numbers as the protocol specifies or not. We can also specify the VL ID, so this is the what's going to go in the lower uh, 16 bits when the, the end system is transmitting the VL. Also, you can specify the, uh, the network, so if the VL is going to transmit on one network or the other, or both. And the bag. Also, we can get down to where we define the messaging ports, so this is where we define our, our ports, uh, like the sampling and queuing, that sort of thing. Uh, I have to give it a port ID, we'll call it 3. So then you can see here is where we can specify the different types of, of ports. And so if you think back, remember back to the protocol stack that, that was shown in a previous slide where we showed the access at the different levels of the protocol stack. So from here is where we can pick uh, the different types of ports that we would create. And so as you can see, it's, it's a well-defined schema. You get lots of like pop-up help if you're using uh, sort of an intelligent XML editor uh, as you go through it here. So that's just a little bit of show and tell on sort of the kind of things that you can do to define your, your network configuration. And then again, you can take this file. Again, uh, as I stated, we have also the, the Flight Simulizer GUI. So this is a graphical tool that you can use to you know, go in and, and graphically uh, point and click and, and uh, define your configuration. The configuration uh, tools, uh, the, or I'm sorry, the, the software API, so this is the C++ API that allows you to programmatically create the configurations. Uh, what we have here is just sort of a visual representation of the hierarchy of objects or, or C++ classes that, that are provided in, in that API. And then again, this, this API also provides functions that allow you to then dump that device object out to an XML file or load it and create the hierarchy of objects from an XML file. Same thing with the, the loadable uh, hex format that goes into the device. You can dump it or load it from that. Some of the additional software test tools that we provide with, with the software packages uh, with, um, with the product. So on the data capture side, the hardware module um, is able to uh, assign uh, high resolution timestamps. I think they're somewhere down around 8 nanoseconds is the, the resolution on the the timestamps of all of the incoming traffic that's captured. And so <coughs> what we also provide with the software package is a tool that will read um, all of that traffic captured off the card and stream it to a PCAP file. Also, we provide a utility that can replay the PCAP files. So it's, it's just simply a, a command line executable. You can pass it a PCAP file and we can replay uh, previously captured uh, data uh, back out through the ARIC 664 uh, PMC, XMC card, um, and we can recreate the, the network timing with uh, one microsecond accuracy. So the really cool thing about this is because we're replaying a standard format such as PCAP, is we also support a use case where say you're just using Wireshark and on a normal PC, normal network interface, and you're capturing some network traffic. You could then save that PCAP file, take it over to um, a PC or a system that say has one of our, our cards installed in it and you can replay that PCAP file out through through the card. And that, that brings the 
presentation to a conclusion.